So remember, Israel has a right to be a state, but not to be a Jewish state with exclusive rights for Jews. It is the end of the Zionist colonial venture, especially the removal of all the racist legal and institutional structures that Israel has erected that is the precondition for lasting injustice, for lasting justice and peace for all the inhabitants of Palestine and Israel. On that, those in solidarity with the Palestinians should brook no compromise. Thank you. This is why those in solidarity with the Palestinians should not tire of emphasizing the core principles of the Palestinian anti-colonial struggle, namely an end to Israeli state racism inside Israel, which aims to bring about both the equalization of the Palestinian citizens of Israel with their Jewish counterparts and allow the Palestinian refugees to return, and the end of Israel's colonial occupation of the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and end the siege in Gaza as the way to resolve what increasingly came to be called the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, rather than ending Zionist colonialism and racism. The term conflict here is key because, of course, it's an ideological term that Israel is invested in. As many of you know, no colonial situation would ever be considered a conflict. For example, French colonialism in Algeria was never considered or called the Algerian-French conflict. Apartheid South Africa was never called the white-black conflict, right? This was basically a colonial and racial situation. The Total and the BDS movement, led by PACB, and finally a form of leadership that they could follow. Support for BDS began to expand across Western universities, labor unions, and among artists and intellectuals. BDS was what I all Israeli uh, academic and cultural institutions and expanded into even economic. Uh, products until Israel will not go and doesn't go back to negotiation at all, but rather until Israel ceases to be a racist state inside Israel, until it withdraws completely from the occupied territory that occupied it in 1967, and until it allows the Palestinian refugees in accordance with the United Nations resolution, resolutions to return to their homeland and be compensated for their losses. That is what BDS is about. We have to be very vigilant and careful about. Someone says BDS, what they do. Because often now BDS seems to have become a goal and not a means. BDS is just a means to achieve this uh, uh, the triumph of anti colonial struggle. It's not the goal. The enormous success of BDS across Western universities and increasingly across European labor unions, academic associations, and within the artistic field is such a great achievement that international power brokers are attempting two simultaneous strategies to break it, with a third subsidiary strategy that is complementary to both. The first strategy is fighting BDS head-on by denying pro-Palestinian faculty employment, denying already employed faculty, students, and artists freedom of expression, and preventing or sabotaging the convening of conferences, as just happened at the University of Sussex in Britain, exhibits, screenings, and other related events. Second strategy is co-opting BDS, as many European governments have recently been attempting to do, by claiming that BDS is something to be adopted exclusively to bring about some form of a two-state solution in accordance with the colonial agreement signed by the Palestinian Authority and Israel, and which the Israelis refuse to abide by. And third, a subsidiary strategy that seeks to dilute the core issues of the colonial situation in Palestine to a question of law and to replace Palestinian activism by an anodyne academic form of Palestinian studies. We see the proliferation now of centers for Palestinian studies in Western universities, and especially in Britain and increasingly in the US, which, and which would be helpful in this kind of transformation and, and shifting things from Palestinian so-called activism to Palestinian studies uh, is helpful to either of the two above strategies, wherein, I mean, basically the way it helps them is one, faculty and students can now be accused of practicing pro-Palestinian activism rather than academic forms of Palestinian studies and be barred from doing so in the name of strict academics, thus helping the first strategy, and b, offering objective and legal academic assessments of the maximum that Palestinians can achieve in line with the second strategy. 
The ISM rationale was that international white volunteers could form a human shield to protect darker Palestinians whom the racist Israeli military had and has thus caused shooting than it did white Europeans and Euro-Americans. ISM did not realize then that white privilege is not sustainable when a white person goes against the white European and Euro-American consensus. ISM would learn this, this lesson the hard way when the Israeli military showed little hesitation in shoot, shooting and killing these white American, European, and Australian volunteers in cold blood 